Dr. Dave 101. All right. The NDA is signed, and the government is now searching for UFOs in the United States. It all came down in a 700 million, billion, trillion, whatever number of gazillion dollar budget that the United States put forward. The only thing holding it back now is whether or not President Joe Biden will sign the bipartisan supported law and budget. He will. You know he will. And there has to be a lot of intrigue regarding the fact that taxpayer dollars in the United States are now going to fund UFOs. We are going to see the public, who actually pays attention to this stuff, literally start to question the sanity of the United States government. We are going to see people question whether or not this is money being spent to actually look for UFOs or to be hidden into other practices that the government does not want their citizens to know about. But whether you like it or not, and whether you're on the fence like I am, this NDAA being signed is a good thing. I hate to admit that. I don't want to admit that because I don't want to trust the government on everything they have covered up for 70 plus years. I don't want to say this is good. I don't want to credit Luis Elizondo. I don't want to credit the work of Chris Mellon, but I have to. Because this is the closest we have ever come to an official disclosure. This is one of those moments that Stephen Bassett has been talking about for every week it was going to happen since 1992. Well, here we are 29 years later, and we are almost there. We have literally rounded third, and we are heading for home. What that home looks like, we have no clue. Now, in this bill, we are going to see the likes of another task force with some acronym come forward. They are going to set up a number of people to study the accounts of not only the military and other government agency sightings, but along with some of the public sightings as well. They want to know what is going on. They want to say, at least at this time, all of the right things. What I didn't like about the bill, and Senator Kristen Gillibrand mentioned this once again, is the threat narrative. What's the threat? Explain to us what the threat is. We've got to get over the threat narrative. If these instances have been happening for hundreds, if not thousands or tens of thousands of years on this planet, they wouldn't wait until we had our technology to where we were to try and take us over. Last I checked, there has been no alien invasion. Maybe it's coming. Maybe that's the reason why that they are wanting to literally make this a subject that we need to talk about? Could be. What if the United States government got a date on when they, whoever they are, are arriving? It's interesting, to say the least. And this is only the beginning of it, people. This is only the beginning of what is going on. Except now it's going to be in the public eye. But here's another difficulty that we also have to remember. How much information 
are they going to tell the public? This is where I grind my teeth on it. This is not an open and transparent bill. There are going to be a lot of secrets that are kept. There are going to be a lot of stories and videos that we will never see. In other words, it almost feels like it's going to be business as usual. How can I say that? This was a good day. Of course it was. It was a very good day and a giant step closer to what we all want, disclosure. I'm leaning more towards a confirmation right now, and I'm very excited to see how this plays out, not only with the media, but the government in general. I want to see what they're going to give us. I want to see what kind of information they're going to keep from us. I want to see if they're going to tell us about the little gray aliens coming from Zeta Reticuli. Are we going to start to get confirmations over the years that maybe SETI actually did find some sounds that count? Or maybe NASA releasing some of their photos that have allegedly been scrubbed and videos that have been oh so gently edited. The big loss in this, because there's always two sides to everything, all right, the big loss in this is still for the public. The public is not going to get the information that they want. But as negative as that sounds, and it's easy to jump on the bandwagon of negativity, it was a good Day, this is good for us. It's going to force other countries like where I am in Canada to start talking about this. The Canadian government has been eerily silent on this entire subject, thanks to a media that has not pressed them on the subject. It's going to get more worldwide attention. It tells us the phenomena, whatever the phenomena is is very real, and it's going to play a part in what we do as humanity in the future. And realistically, we could sit here and we could talk about Gillibrand, Rubio, Burchett, and others in Washington, D.C. for really playing a big role, but whether you like them or not, a giant thank you from the UFO community has to be pointed towards Luis Elizondo and Chris Mellon. Since these gentlemen left the To The Stars Academy, they have been on fire in making people aware. They have traveled to different countries talking about the phenomena. Elizondo has talked to Canada, the United Kingdom, Italy, Australia, and other countries about this subject. Chris Mellon, for all we know, has probably done the same. But the big thing that we are seeing right now is positivity that the entire phenomena is now in play. And hopefully there is no turning back. Hopefully this doesn't end like the... 21st century edition of Project Blue Book, where all they find is swamp gas and Venus. No, I think we're actually beyond that. And for me, where I saw the change was a number of months ago when all of a sudden Luis Elizondo and Chris Mellon stopped using the terms Russia and China in their vocabulary. Now I remember looking back on it thinking, hot dang, they've upped the ante on this. Because at first it was all about threats. 
it was all about Russia or China. And in the same sentence saying, well, we know this is non-human. This is exciting times for us in ufology. Whether you're a young gun, an old guard, or somebody brand new to the field learning about it for the first time, we are in some very interesting days. It's going to be very positive for some. It's going to be very negative for others. But it's going to make for some incredible conversation. Because there are pieces to this that haven't come into fruition yet. Aliens, extraterrestrials, when do they become part of the focus? Somebody's flying the craft. And if they're drones, somebody's controlling those drones or something. When we start talking extraterrestrials, we are going to open up the idea of getting to the experiencers. Contact abductions, consciousness, it all comes into play, and it's now started. And the fact that this comes on the heels of the very intriguing New York Times article four years ago is incredible. The timing is synchronistic that it happens now. I'm taking this as a positive, and I'm somebody who's been very critical of the entire UFO phenomena since the To the Stars Academy came out. And they couldn't tell their head from their ass on what they were doing. But for today, everybody in ufology should be cheering and waving the winning flag because the checkered flag has never fallen on this community. It never has. It may never again. But this is a big step forward in moving the subject ahead with humanity. Look, there is a long, long road to go. We cannot rest on our laurels saying, we won. This is a battle that's been won. The war is still going on. There are a lot of questions that need to be answered. From secret space programs to ET contact to where are they coming from. Does it tie to the paranormal, the cryptid world, consciousness? There are literally hundreds of questions, thousands of questions that still need to be answered. But the good part about it is, there is now a budget, and there will be a team that works on this. And it's up to people in this community to continue the pressure to get the stories out, to get the evidence out. Because we just can't stop on a bunch of voting talking heads on their words. We can't stop on their words. We have to keep going. But UFOs, UFOs are officially on the table. And that, my friends, is a good thing. It's a step forward. It's a step towards positivity. If you're thinking you're going to get something right off the bat, like we got the UFO videos from four years ago, that will not happen. You will not learn about your experiences. We don't know what they're going to continue with the cover-up. But all we have to do is keep the pressure on because we have moved the ball forward. And for right now, that's a nice early Christmas present. And that is your Dave 101.